sucks working out here in the winter. It's sort of cold. Oh, that's hot. This is not steep long enough. No, I did not let my tea steep long enough. So right now I have just hot tea flavored water. Ugh. So such is my life. What's up, YouTube? Griever here, and yes, as you can see by the sign behind me, we're going to be talking about the Jet Cita Model S. So, yeah, I finally <laughs> decided to order one off of Evike, and it came, and we're going to take a look at it, like I do with everything. <laughs> but we're going to do this one a little differently, because the Cita Model S has been out for while now uh it got sent out a couple of months ago to a bunch of uh, a bunch of people on already doing um reviews and stuff like that not me not that i'm bitter uh but what i'm gonna do is because since its release we've gotten a couple other things in the hobby that have kind of outshone and outperformed this thing so i'm gonna go over the aesthetics of this like i normally do but when we go to the bench, we're going to start doing a compare and contrast to the above and below where the CETA falls. Because the CETA normally retails, you can find it on evike.com for like 90 bucks normally. Uh, the base model one that I got. Uh, mine I got on sale for like 70 I want to say. But, or 60 what I, It might have been like 65 70 Honestly, I can't remember. But we have the Nexus Pro, which actually comes in under what this is at 50 bucks. But we also have the Dart Zone Pro Mark 1.1 at 150, which is honestly probably a little clo more closer to the way this kind of works. But I'm going to compare both, all three of them, and just see where this basically kind of lies in the hobby now. Because people still get it. I mean, people enjoy it. I've been playing around with this thing. It's not terrible, but I'll save judgment for final thoughts. Um, but just, you know, does this still hold a place as a mid-tier, as a mid-tier, I would say a mid-tier cost blaster over something like the Nexus or the Mark 1.1? I know a lot of people will argue with me that the Nexus outshines them all, and that's totally fine, but these are my opinions and my and my review, so that's what we're doing. So going over the aesthetics of this thing, I do like the black and blue uh, color scheme on this thing. There is zero on this side, nor on this side. However, you do see embossed into the plastic Cita here and here along with the Jet logo here. And I have to do say, I really do like Jet's logo. It's really cute because it's a little target, but it spells out Jet and it's really hard to see in the black plastic. So I'll show it more when we go to the workbench. Uh, you do have two uh, lug bolts here because, or pins, because you can actually remove the upper and lower receiver, which is part of what makes this thing so I guess you can say versatile because that's how you actually get into the blaster. You don't have to unscrew anything in order to actually get to the internals, which honestly is actually a good thing because a downside to this is the majority of my screws are actually stripped out. Um, looking at what I can see right here, there's maybe one or two out of the five that are in the rail section two maybe three in the body but every single one that's in the handle and that is not by me are basically all stripped out and honestly i'm not happy about that because the other gripe that i have with this thing is the handle itself it's not uncomfortable it's 
a good size for what this is. My problem is, though, this is about as reinforced as nothing, because look at what it can do. It's It has a good deal of flex, and if by chance you do flex it by accident, you'd kind of have to fiddle with it to try and get it back to line up, because if I did that, now I have like a little ridge right here, and you can even hear it. So, I mean, now it's fine. But, yeah, I'm, I don't like that. That I do not like at all. Um, I do like the magazine release, however, because, one, it is ambidextrous. It is on the side here, kind of like the old Retaliators, uh, Alpha Troopers, those kind of things from the end strike lines. And I do really like those because, well, I like the the drop one that, the I guess you can say the drop, uh, not the drop one. I'm trying to think of the word the the release that's like coming out at the bottom where it's very easy to hit it with a finger i have to say when the magazine adapter already has that on there to have it doubled it's not so much a you know confusing but it's it's a bit redundant like for example here i'll just load the clip in real quick here you just have the one release that's hanging down for the magazine adapter to release the actual half dart magazine where here it's just to release everything on my nexus pro i have two of them i have the one for the adapter here and then i have the one in the adapter for the magazine release so it's not again it's not like it gets in the way or anything it's just to me it just that seems a little neater so that's what i kind of like more about that one uh you do have a buffer tube style stock on here now this is my other like really major gripe that i've had with this and it's that one the way this thing is built for someone of my stature i don't actually need I don't actually need to extend the stock like unlike the dart zone uh and the and the the dart zone pro and the nexus pro i extend those because it gives me like a little bit more comfort in the way that those are held but for some reason on this i am totally fine keeping the stock short on this and this is totally like i said for me it feels totally fine because if I do extend the stock, I feel like because of the pump grip that's on here, my arm feels a little too extended on here. And again, this is, I'm 6'4", and I'm saying this, like, my arm is like at full extension, trying to make sure I hold on to this with the stock fully extended. The other issue I had with this stock is this. There's an awful lot of play and wibble in there, and I do not like that at all. Um, this is also a bit of, I've, I have found a bit of a pain in the butt to get, and it's normally, I'll like struggle with this thing for like, you know, a good solid half a minute, and then it's just, oh, I turned it just like three millimeters to the right, and the damn thing popped off, but... Now this thing's not popping off at all. But, anyway, I can assure you, there is an M4 buffer, buffer tube style stock adapter on there, which you will see when we go to the workbench, because that is going to come off, because I'm going to show you another gripe I had with this thing. But, let's go to the workbench, so we can actually take a much better look at what the Jet Sita model s has to offer along with comparing it to how it holds up against the other two blasters the adventure force pro the adventure force nexus pro and the dart zone pro mark 1.1 so let's go over to there okay so we're here on the workbench and as you can see i already have the cedar here and i've taken off that 
silly stock and you can see off on the side here i also have my mark 1.1 and my nexus pro uh to again do the compare and contrasting with it so first things first is i'm going to address the buffer tube issue that i had so as we can see here it has a m4 style buffer tube that the stock went on now the nexus pro or i'm sorry the dart zone pro is supposed to have one along with the nexus pro now they do look a little different obviously but if these are supposed to be m4 style uh, stock attachments we run into a small problem they are tight is anything the nexus pro stock tight as anything on here <clears throat> The Dart Zone Pro Stock. I can't, I can't even get it past that. So, yeah, it really extends the uh, stock. But, yeah, they will not work. Sorry. They will not work on the CETA. So, you have this thing unless you get something different. And, of course, the fun of trying to get it back on is getting it over that thing. And I think I finally have done it enough to where I'm wearing it down, so it'll actually pop off if I need it to. So. Now, going over a couple of things on this, I noticed an odd thing in regards to the Picatinny rail. Now, this is Picatinny, and it does work. And... Picatinny is supposed to be on the Nexus Pro and the 1.1. So I'm like, okay, let's see, you know, how it works. Now, I'm not taking this one off just because it works with, an, I have to use an Allen key to take the um, scope off. But I can assure you, this one does work on here. So that's fine. Now, I have this uh, green dot site that I got from containment crew a while back and this one's easy enough to remove because it's just it's actually thumb screws on this side but the interesting thing with this particular site now obviously it worked on the Picatinny is that when I put it on here and I completely tighten down these thumb screws the site is actually loose and I really don't understand why so that's just a fun little thing like this cheap scope I got off of Amazon works totally fine the cheap side I got off of uh, containment crew unfortunately it doesn't so I figured hey why not Let's see what the other sides do. Now, stupid thing is stuck. So, regarding the Nexus Pro sites, the back sight, the, the flip up iron sight will not work. It was designed basically to go on the back of the Nexus Pro, and that was it. Not getting that on. However, the front iron sight actually does work very nicely so i mean you're not gonna have the back side but you can at least get a front side on this thing which is not bad it's at least something so that brings us to the 1.1 sites will these work and the answer is yes now the front sight for some reason feels a lot tighter going on like it goes but it feels very tight to move. The rear sight actually moves a lot easier, surprisingly, but those will work as well. So if you happen to have either the 1.0 or the 1.1 sights, you would actually be able to use those if you had nothing else for this, because without it, you just have a flat picked in your rail. Now, moving on to the actual, I guess you can say the guts of the blaster. Uh, as I had mentioned earlier, the one cool thing about this is removing these pins and the thumb screws for the 
um, for the pump grip, you can actually get into the blaster like that, unlike the Nexus Pro, which you have to completely and totally open up, or the Dart Zone Pro 1.1, which again, you have to completely open up. You can take the front barrel off, which does help, but you still have to basically unscrew the entire thing. You also have the added issue of you have the grip on it and also the non unscrewable cap in the back, which is a pain to get off, which is why, if you notice, mine was not there anymore. You have those to deal with. So this, it's out of all three of them, this is going to be the easiest to get into. It's also, since the Sita has been around for a while, you have a lot of replacement parts, and I'll show you what is available and also how easy it is to actually get into this thing. So that's one screw there. One screw there, pin, pin, and separate. And here we have the sled and the breech. And here we have our plunger tube assembly, along with the plunger and the spring that's inside of it. Now, to get this out, it's actually, it's just very easy. You just push the side walls out a little bit and it will pop out. Now I would suggest you bracing the front of it because if not, that thing's going to go flying and you don't want to send your plunger tube flying because that's just wrong. Um, it can go in, I believe either way. I just, I'm using this sticker as the top since it just says a nice little warning of making sure you, put the trigger in a lock position before you pull it out, but which I do. And then you also have the screw itself. Now you do not get access to the catch. You can see down in there, that little white uh, piece that is right there. That is your catch mechanism. If you needed to get to the catch, the trigger, the magazine release, or your safety, you have to open up the hole low receiver to get to that stuff. But for the mo for the main things that you're going to be fiddling with, the spring, the plunger, the breech, that kind of stuff, that's very easy. The two pins and the two thumb screws, and you're in to what you need to get to. So while it makes getting into the blaster and swapping parts out very easy like this, the Nexus Pro has it beat when you're just worrying about swapping a spring or trying to up and lower the game. Because while you have to do all of this to upgrade any kind of performance on this, to upgrade the performance on this, all you got to do is take the stock off, one screw, swap out your spring, or get one of these uh, 3D printed caps to put on there. And that's it. That would be this modded. So it's a little bit more involved to upgrade this, but again, you're not having to worry about unscrewing, stripping screws, that kind of thing. Unfortunately, my handle, those are all very easy to get to. So, and obviously reassembly is going to be just as easy because you just make sure that your plunger rod is on the spring line up the plunger and just push it back until you hear a click and your plunger is back reinstalled properly now i've done this a couple of times off camera obviously um i tend to notice that getting the two halves back together it can be a little tricky at times i'm sure the more i do it the more easier it will get for me but the whole thing is like one you have to get the bolt sled into these grooves right here and if they're off in any way shape or form it's going to cause issues reassembling just make sure that is back in there and then to get the upper receiver back on now the upper receiver has 
these little grooves on the inside here, which hopefully you'll be able to see like right there and right there. That's where it slides on with using those as the guides. And the only thing is like I've had issues where I thought I've had it, but it's not going 100% and then something gets kind of caught. But it looks like this time I actually did get it fine. So that's a surprise. Also, you do have two, unlike the 1.1, which I'll get to in a second, you do have two, the two uh, pins. One is short, one is long. The short one goes in the top here. And then the long one goes down here. And then for the thumb screws, you just make sure at least, if you can get one side lined up, you're fine. Line up one side. Make sure it's moving the breech a bit. And there we go. This is golden. So now, there we go with that. That's basically how you can upgrade and do everything you want with the CETA. There are actually a lot of kits out for the CETA since it has been out for so long. There's springs, there's metal internals, there's um, 3D printed parts and all. And I have to say, one of the 3D printed parts I've seen, which I may or may not get, I haven't decided yet, is a replacement pump grip. Now, I love this pump grip. It is probably one of my favorite pump grips of all time, honestly. But, and I know I take them off on my Alpha Trooper, but it does. It, this actually could use a little hook on the back and there are 3d printed replacement grips that actually do have that it's the same exact design just with the little hook here to catch your hand which honestly i think is great now the dart zone pro 1.1 has a fairly similar setup you have two pins and two thumb screws and you're able to take this apart however it's completely and utterly different because what you're taking apart is basically just to minimize this thing. So you pull the pins, you take the screw out, and you take the screw out on this side. And you're able to remove the front half of the blaster along with the pump grip. And that's really it. That, that's the only purpose that doing that actually serves. So that was basically designed with travel and I guess uh, compactability in mind. Now, if you wanted to swap out this barrel, you don't even need to do that. All you have to do is unscrew the one small screw that's right there and these four screws on the outside of the barrel right at the very tip to slide this front piece out and then swap your barrel out because this does have a swappable barrel. Because you can put in a plastic barrel for uh, full-length darts or to depower this thing. Or you can just leave in the aluminum barrel that it does come with. And then the reassembly. Just slide this thing right on. Put your pins in. And just like the other one, line up your thumb screws. And this thing is set. So, if you wanted to swap the barrel out on this one, and I've looked for a couple of different ways, and if I've missed something, I'm sure somebody will let me know in the comments. But as far as I can tell, if you want to swap the barrel out on this thing, you have to unscrew the entire upper receiver to get to the barrel in here. So, if you wanted to do the an extended barrel or put brass in here or whatever it's going to be a little bit more complicated than swapping it out in the 1.1 or honestly even the nexus because if you're opening up the nexus you're just getting at everything so you know the nexus is kind of like a i'm just going to work on this and upgrade it and do everything in one shot where this you can take your time with you can upgrade the spring then uh, maybe i'll upgrade the plunger tube well, if I upgrade the punch tube, then I'll have to upgrade this, 
the plunger itself. You know what? Maybe I can get a reinforced bolt sled. You know, and do that thing at your leisure. And it will be easy, whereas on the Nexus Pro, it's kind of like, okay, I upgraded the spring. It's easy. Just one screw, boom, done. Oh, I want to switch out the barrel. Open everything up. Close everything up. Oh, I wanted to do uh, swap out something else now. Open the whole thing up. Close the whole thing up again. So that I can see getting a little tedious, whereas this, it's a very quick to get to the meaty bits. It's just, unfortunately, the auxiliary bits are a lot harder to get to. So I think that about does it for the overview of the CETA itself and how I wanted to compare and contrast it to the other blasters and such. So with that all said, I'm going to give you guys my final thoughts on this. Okay, so my final thoughts on the Jet Sienna Model S. Um, yeah, it's still a great blaster. Uh, a lot of the issues that the original Sienna had, they did fix in this one. There are a lot of pros to this blaster. I mean, the design of it is still really nice. The pump grip on here, again, is probably my favorite out of everything. It has a built-in, I mean, granted, it's not a great one, but it's got a built-in scar barrel almost, or at least r decent rifling in it. The downsides to this thing, though, are, one, the weird issue I had with the Picatinny rail. Um, the little cheap, cheap out things that I found with this thing. Um, but one thing I do have to say is... The ease of being able to upgrade this is definitely the best out of the three. Now, by that, to upgrade your Dart Zone, the Dart Zone Pro Mark 1.1, honestly, like I said, I really don't see a need for it. And to just do anything, even as mundane as just swapping out the barrels, you don't even have to open it up. It's just a little screw at the bottom of, the, or I should say at the back of the front barrel, and you're able to swap it out. Now, I do have to try and I should actually test to see if it does work with uh, the worker barrel or the brass barrels I got from Jade. Um, I'll have to try that and I may just post that in like Instagram or on Facebook and something like that. So definitely go follow us on social media. But the fact that pulling the two pins and the screws that hold the pump grip on and you're able to get to your breach, your bolt sled, your plunger tube, your spring, maybe your, I don't know why I'm blanking on if I can get to the uh, catch or not. Wow. But regardless, the main components you're able to get to without having to open up the blaster. Now that being said, to get to the barrel in this thing, you have to open up the entire upper receiver in order to get to that thing, which that kind of sucks, but it is what it is. So yeah, the last thing really is just kind of the pricing on it. Like, if you can get this on sale for like I did, it's an okay, it's a, it's a good buy. I would pick it up at least just to have one. Now, therein lies also where I kind of, eh, kind of falter with the pricing on it because, one, this normally retails for $90. Uh, to me, a $90 blaster should not have that much creak in a handle or at least this crappy of a this much that crappy of a stock i mean i'm sorry the nexus pro is 50 bucks the handle don't do that and that stock is really nice now they do have an upgraded version of this on evike.com where you get it with sites and you get a better stock on this but that's also 150 bucks you're still having to pay for shipping on evac because I'll put it down here. But as far as I know, I don't think they do free shipping. Or if so, it's free shipping at a threshold. And I think because it's mainly airsoft, it is fairly higher. Whereas 150 bucks, you can get a Dart Zone Pro 1.1 with sights and a better stock. So it's really on how you want to look at it. Because with the Dart Zone Pro... While it is a Target exclusive, 
If you don't have a Target card, yeah, you're going to be paying 150 plus shipping and handling. Or if you happen to have a Target card, you get it for 5% off and free shipping. So right then and there, that to me is a better deal. But again, it depends on how you would like to go about that. So yeah, the Cena is nice. It's got it it has its pros it definitely has its cons and i'll be honest if i do get another one of the quote-unquote hobby grade blasters it's gonna be a nexus pro because to me it does everything that the cita does yeah if you're gonna mod it you have to open up the whole thing but that's fine because if you're gonna mod it you're gonna mod it anyway so there's that. So I think that about sums it up for the Jet Cena Model S. So, so that's going to be it for this video. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please throw us a like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of the Jet Cena Model S. Do you have one? Have you had issues with yours? Let me know. I'd love to hear about it. So, oh, and don't forget to click that little bell icon. Otherwise, you may not know when me and Arlene are doing our silliness here on the channel. So, again, thank you all very much for joining us. I will see you guys next time. Later.